Hi Dad, that is Marha Dad here again. In this video, I have to show you in case you have somebody coming to your office and you want to connect to your wireless and you are using Capsman, so you have the controller on from Microtech controlling all your uh, CAPS uh, or all your access points. So how you can, this user or those users, you can put them in a separated VLAN so they don't take the wireless which is provided for your own network so they may have access to all your network. So what you can do, you can create for them a VLAN and put them inside this VLAN. Now, if you don't know what is Capsman, I can just briefly tell you Capsman is a controller on Microtik where you can control all the access points of Microtik. So it's like one router where you do it as a Capsman. So it's a CAP manager and all the CAPs which are the access points will be controlled from this manager. Now, if you don't know what is Capsman, I highly advise you to take my course, which is Microtik Capsman with Labs. So in this course, I speak about everything containing the uh, part of the Capsman and the CAPs and how you can do the provisioning. Of course, uh, I speak much more than that. So in this lab, I'm going to only focus. So I have already configured the Capsman. So I'm going to focus only on showing you how in case, for example, you want some users to be in another VLAN. So not really entering to your wireless, but you just want to put him in another VLAN. So just to make things uh, more secure for your customer. So how you can do that. So let's go now to the uh, lab to show you what is the scenario and I will come back to the configuration and start doing it. So this is my settings at this moment. I have this router as a capsman and this is an access point which is a cap. So it is already uh, managed by the Capsman. This Capsman have internet and uh, this one is giving the wireless. All the configuration we have done it on the Capsman and this is already provisioned so nothing special over here. Now what I want is that in case someone comes now with a phone or with a tablet or with uh, his computer so someone visiting your office and uh, then he will get the wireless, which is this one propagating. Then he enter to the wireless and then he get an IP address from this Capsman on the, the bridge interface that you have created uh, using the data pass over here. So what's going to happen that he can enter to your network. So what we really want is that we don't want that. We just like if this guy comes to our network and he's connected to the wireless, then he go directly to another VLAN. So that's what uh, we need to do. Now, if I show you, if I go to my phone now, let me just open my phone so you can see what we have over here. So this is the wireless. You see this uh, wireless is the one which is configured by the Capsman. And if you want, I can just show you here. This is the Capsman. And if we go to the Capsman, you can go to the configuration over here. And you can see this is the SSID on the wireless. So I've made it wireless. So now if I connect my uh, phone to the wireless and I put the password one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is the password. And then I'll say here, connect. You see that it's going to connect directly. Actually, the password is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I already put it, but you can see that it has been connected. And at this moment, I do have internet. And if you want, uh, we can just... Uh, go to uh, one of the applications that I have. So ping tools. And from here I can ping to a.a.a.a. .a .a .a. And you can see I do have internet. If we go to the Capsman, let's have a look on the Capsman. So uh, we can check on the Capsman uh, on the registration table. Here we go. So this one is connected to the Cap1. Cap1 is the access point that uh, I have. Maybe it's nice to put the picture so you can see. So it's called uh, Cap1. This is the AP2 that you see over here. So, and if you look in the IP uh, DHCP server and inside the lease, you can see that it has received this IP 10.50.50.254 from the DHCP server. And this DHCP server actually is created on the bridge interface, which is the data pass. So, so far, so good. Now, if anyone is connected to my wireless, then in this case, you can go to the uh, network that I have, which I really don't want. So let's say that this guy is a visitor. He just came now to, to our office and he just get connected. And uh, yeah, I saw that or my boss called me or whatever. Like, I don't want this guy to be connected to our networks. I want him to go to another VLAN. 
So how can we do that? Actually, it's straightforward. What we can do, we can first take this guy to the access list. So we go to the registration. This is his MAC address. This is my phone MAC address. I will copy it to the access list. So it's inside the access list over here. Very good. Now, what I need to do over here, we can do many things, but this is the most important, is the VLAN. So I will say here, the VLAN mode is use tag, so make the tag to this MAC address and put it inside VLAN, let's say on VLAN 10. All right, so now I put it on VLAN 10, but this is not enough because look, if I open again my phone and from here I go again to the wireless. And you can see it's now because on VLAN 10 is trying to connect. If you want, let's do it from scratch. So I'll just forget it. And then I connect to the wireless and I put the password one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I will say connect. You will see that he will try and try and try and try to get an IP address, but he's not able to get an IP address and to be connected. Why? Because that is, we didn't define any VLAN 10 on the Capsman. So if you want, I can go back to the picture here. So what's going to happen is that this is going to uh, connect to the uh, wireless. So this is the wireless. So it's connected to the wireless of this one. That one is saying, okay, then uh, I have to speak to the Capsman. Then the Capsman receive it. He put it on VLAN 10, but yeah. There is no any DHCP server on VLAN 10. There is uh, no uh, NAT on VLAN 10, nothing. So that's why you see that there is no DHCP server on VLAN 10 and he's not able to get the IP. So if you look here, here we go. Fail to obtain IP address. You see it on my phone? Fail to obtain an IP address. So by doing just that, copying to the access list is not enough. What we need to do now it's good that we put it on the um, here access list. So this MAC address is part of VLAN 10. But what I need to do inside this bridge. So remember that uh, on the data pass, you have to define a bridge. So if you look to the Capsman again, you see that there is a data path, which I didn't define it here. Actually, I defined it inside the configuration. So you see that is a data pass. So that means that all the traffic that are coming from the CAPS to the CAPSman are finishing on the bridge of this um, CAPSman. And this bridge, which is over here, I put on it an IP address. You see it, 10.50.50. something. So that is the IP address on the bridge. And then I have defined the SCP server on that bridge. Look, this is the DHCP server, which is on this bridge. So that means anyone connected to the wireless, he can get this IP from this range of the DHCP server. But that's if doesn't have any VLAN, but now it has VLAN 10. So what we need to do now, we have to go to the interfaces. And on the interfaces, I have to create a VLAN. And this time I have to create a VLAN ID 10. And where should it, should it be? It's under the bridge because now the traffic is coming to the bridge and the bridge say, this is VLAN 10. What shall I do with that? So now he knows that I have a VLAN 10. Actually, this one, the VLAN ID is the important one. That is the name of the interface. It's under me on the bridge. Very good. So I just make it. So this is the VLAN 10. Now what I need to do is to make the DHCP server on VLAN 10. So IP DHCP server. And then I'll say DHCP setup on VLAN 10. I'm going to put the range. Actually, before I do that, huh? <laughs> we have to put the IP address on the VLAN 10. So remember, we put on the bridge 10.50. Let's put on the VLAN 10, 10.60, for example, dot dot one slash 24. You cannot create a DHCP server unless you have an IP address on that interface, which is for the DHCP server. Very good. So now 10.60.60.1 is there. Now I can create the DHCP server on VLAN 10. DHCP setup on VLAN 10, 10.60.60.0. That's the other space, correct? This is the gateway, correct? Which is the IP on VLAN 10 of this router. This is the range that is going to give. Those are the DNS and that's it. Very good. Now the last step to be sure is that you have the NAT. So these IP addresses should be natted to go to the internet. By default, I have created a NAT myself. 
for the for allowing the IP coming from the bridge to go. So I said everything. I didn't specify what is the source address. Anything to be uh, masquerade, which is going out of Ethernet one. And Ethernet one, you can see on the picture, is the one connected to the internet. Very good. So that's it. Now let's try. Let's go again to the phone and try if it's gonna work again. So we open the phone here. Now I will make again. Now this is the password. We see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I'm connected to the wireless and then connect. So now the traffic is going to the Capsman. The Capsman arrived to the bridge. The bridge says it's VLAN 10. They say, oh, I have an interface under me, VLAN 10. So it's going there and then it's got the IP from the VLAN 10 from the DHCP server. And we have the net to be able to net it. And in this case, you are putting this guy on a VLAN 10, which is another VLAN. So now if we look here, and uh, we see the IP, you see the IP 10.60.60.253. Very good. So it has received from the range of the VLAN 10. And it is connected to the internet. Now, if we go to the Capsman to see what we have here. So that is the radio. It is on the uh, Cap 1, which is uh, uh, the uh, AP2. So uh, now we can see these are the information from the registration table. So, and you see this is the address list that I have created, the access list, and it's saying that it is inside VLAN 10. And finally, if we go to the DHCP server, IP DHCP server, and we go to these, we can see that it has received 10.60.60.253. Excellent, very good. So now my mission has been uh, accomplished, and if you want, we can just make one more thing, is to try now to ping to the internet to see if it's going to the internet very good so it's going to the internet and by doing that you are separating now layer 2 using the vlan so this guy who is connected to your network on your capsman he's now on another vlan that's layer 2 and of course layer 3 because remember uh, we have 10.50 on the uh, normal wireless users and on VLAN 10 we put 10.60 so also you are separating the layer 3. So by doing that you have solved the pr problem using of course here the uh, access list. So uh, what you need only to know is the MAC address of the uh, users who are coming to uh, connect to your network. You put them inside an access list and yeah you do the conversion that I have done and then they are on another VLAN. So this is all what I wanted to show you in this video. I hope it was informative for you. And uh, if you like my video, please do not forget to make like and share it so other people can know about it. So thank you very much and see you in the upcoming video.